Yeah, I'm recording. You can record too. But. I'm recording. Add your record. Alright, here we go. Three, two, one. Alright, everybody, welcome. Uh, internet. And uh, all 55 of you are watching the last video. Uh, this is uh, session 5 of uh, the Walking Dead University. It's a class of condition that's taking place uh, near Table Rock Lake in southern Missouri. Here we we have a uh, usual suspect. We have Tetnac, we have Slip, we have Sim, we have Rogue, and we have uh, Booker. Um, and uh, for our in memoriam, in our backstory, in our introduction, we have Slip. He's going to tell us a little story about one of the uh, recently arrived NPCs on this journal here, and uh, let you take it away. So, Journal and then go down to Tina Bell. Okay. Got it? Yep. That's right. Tina was no monster. She worked hard at a thankless job. Hardly ever skimmed the register, skimmed and saved. And every time she was about to get ahead, Mom comes around with her hand out. Fucking useless cunt. Calling her a monster for turning her away last night. She'd get it out every once in a while, but just showing up, flush with cash, burning a hole in his pocket, making her smile with some story about setting a bum on fire while he was sleeping. <laughs> it was those little things that made life bearable. But now he was locked up for who knows how long. She was trapped in this hellhole, nothing to look forward to. Mom, sure to come around begging like some wine of cur for slot money. Oh, wait, was the paid electric bill. Uh huh. Thing was. Tina knew Mom had a stash of money in the fucking bank inheritance from two dead bastards. So why come asking Tina for handouts? That's my retirement, hon. You won't want to be taking care of your old mom when I'm too old to wipe my own ass. Cheap is what she was. Once I'm proved her little girl still loved her. That ship sailed a long time ago, Mama. Too many stepdads grabbing hands and Mom all too happy to turn blind eye. Tina stubbed out her cigarette in the trash next to the UDF she worked at and imagined she was stubbing it out in her mom's eyes. Why couldn't mom have the good grace to smoke like a freight train or drink like a fish? Then Tina might have something to look forward to. Mom on a respirator, using out her last painful breath, her skin all yellow and papery from a rotten liver. But no, she was a picture of health, all perky and speed walking in the park with a couple of old bitty friends like they was Richard's. Tina was tired of waiting for her mom to die. Job himself would have lost his patience with God by now. Tomorrow was business day at lockup. She smiled to herself as she pictured the butcher across that chip from my table, looking at her like they was the only two people in the whole damn world. He was talking about filing another appeal, get some evidence thrown out, and then get log right or something or other. But lawyers cost money. He sure as shit didn't have any. Tina could barely keep both of them in smoke. Smoke. Huh. Smoke. She stared down at the fresh cigarette between her figure and fingers, about to light it. Stared at the lighter's butane flame, hypnotized like a snake. Mom still lived in that tiny old house, what used to be an outbuilding for bigger property. Root sag, paint peeling, porch about to fall in. Wouldn't take much. Could hardly take a spark. She glanced over at the gas pumps across the parking lot. Still, just to make sure. Visiting day, Tina is all smiles, glowing with happiness. Her hair smells like smoke, but she can't make herself take a shower. The smell reminds her that it wasn't all just some dream. Wearing her best black heels and a little black leather skirt that said butcher into a frenzy. She got out of her shitty old yard and started to shimmy up toward the prison visitor center entrance. Even that shit on the news couldn't get her down today. Her strange sounds, yells and screams, could be heard from even outside the prison. He paused on the sidewalk. There was some sort of riot. Visiting day was going to get canceled for sure. A dark cloud passed over her sunny day. She 
glanced back over at the parking lot and it registered that most of the police cars were gone. The only one left was a black car. As her brow creased in thought, an enormous explosion from the prison knocked her on her ass. Air was filled with smoke and shouting. Tina's ears rang. People in prison jumpers cackled and hooted as they fled the building. Tina coughed. Stopped. Um having trouble with her balance. The smoke started to clear, but a dark silhouette stopped just next to her, reached for her elbow, and gently helped her to stand. She wobbled a little, but managed to mumble, Get your fucking hands up! When she looked into the eyes of a man holding her arm. Hey, Angel. Looks like today is our lucky day. You feel like getting in some trouble? Tina grinned up at him, reached into her purse, and pulled out two cigarettes. She lit both in her mouth and transferred one to his. <sighs> like you have to ask. Yeah, maybe there's a different way to do that. You guys remember? Oh, here we go. Lighting controls. Yeah, it should be a slider on there. There you go. So. As the scene opens... You hear from across the from across the uh, the lake. You hear gunshots. If you remember from last time, you hear this yelling. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Get him! Woo! And if anybody's still up on the roof of the clubhouse, you can see far, far away, probably 100, 200 meters out. There's like a little pontoon boat or a small vessel kind of bobbing up and down in the water. And you can hear an outboard motor from far across the lake. It sounds like a high, tinny, kind of high-pitched whine as it gets closer and closer to the pontoon. Um, Ethan and Olivia are, are obviously scared. Um, they've recently been led into the clubhouse along with everybody else, and the place is absolutely packed. There's 31 people in there now. And uh, I'll let you guys take it away. Going back on the roof to see what was all the noise was about, and she's shaking her head. That's bad news. They're gonna see the lights. I don't know who they are, but I don't want them here. People acting like an asshole out there in the lake in time like this. She just shakes her head. You hear yeah. occasionally uh, after the gunshot screams come up from across the lake and you can see little puffs of smoke out there. Poof. You hear gunfire. Poof. Uh, um, Bill's gonna, um, I think he's got his pistol in his hand still and he's, uh, uh, I guess he's following Danny. I think he was downstairs last time too. And um, uh, he's gonna look at the others too and be like, those dumbasses are sure making a lot of noise. Is anybody up on the roof still? I think we all are. Okay, okay, yeah. So the other thing you notice as the sun started to rise, and I mentioned this last time, is that now, probably drawn by this chaos that's going on south and <clears throat> across the lake, um, in the northern part <clears throat> of kind of the island, the peninsula you're on, you see again uh, shambling shapes kind of shuffle out of the woods onto the street um, and the threat level is increased to three and this horde size is at least a hundred of them so four and they're shambling towards you and towards the lake and you hear from across the lake woo get him get him hmm If you don't mind, I'll do a quick recap on Ben for everybody and get him up on the roof, too. Mm -hmm. So unlike the rest of them, after Ben got back, he had been fairly exhausted. Uh, a heavy toll over the last few days with the number of rounds he had put down range, killing what were once people but now turned into insane monsters living off the flesh of the living and tearing them to pieces. 
after he had gotten back to um, the bar, he had first checked on Liz and Kat to see how they were doing, make sure they had something to keep them entertained, to keep their minds off the horrible situation, and then went to his own corner unpacking his aid bagging out a few things. Uh, he had gotten out a molly belt and put on it a, a case for his binoculars and a uh, sheath for his bayonet, a long knife, and then he had gone to work cleaning uh, the AR after some heavy use over the last few days and uh, cleaning a shotgun, making sure it was in good working order, going through the pistols of anybody that wanted him to go through it. And before he knew it, he had fallen into a deep sleep without even realizing it. The morning had slowly come and the shots had woken him quickly, getting his gear together, going out to the front, looking to the ladder that had gotten to the roof, and then seeing uh, the undead slowly coming from the north out of the trees. He kind of calls out to him, hey, hey! Look, up there, and he kind of points his nose. We gotta get down, get down, get inside. You're saying that to us? Yeah, because aren't they, Bo, I'm not correct, that there's like probably, a, like you said, about 100 coming from the north, yep. or the from the hotel. Oh, yeah, that, that direction, yep. Look, and he's trying to do his best to keep quiet, and he kind of like exaggerates and points with his hand over there. Look, all that noise is attracting them. Let him walk past us and go towards the lakeside. Possible. There's, there's people on the lake. These things can't swim. We figured that out. We just need to hunker down for a minute. We can't get pinched between these two things. <sighs> She thinks about Ethan and Olivia and their reaction, but she kind of shakes her head. It's not much to do about it. All right, let's go downstairs and tell everybody to keep the lights down. Keep it quiet. I mean, they don't really have a lot of lights anyway, so... It's, it's, it's around dawn now anyway. Yeah. So I'll climb down. Try to warn everybody to keep quiet. We don't want to attract any trouble. Yeah, once everybody's down, he kind of helps Danny, helps whoever needs it down. He'll grab the ladder, kind of bring it in, and along with Daddy, kind of, everybody, close the curtains. All lights off. Everybody huddle in here. Shh, quiet. Bella kind of comes up to you guys as you descend the, the steps to, you know, go outside. What's going on up there? I can see as well as anybody else what's going on outside. I'm guessing you look, those things are coming again from the north. At least we're inside this time, but she kind of puts the, you know, blind down or looks to the side and says it looks to be at least two or three times as many of them now than there were before. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. And then one of the, one of the, uh, the NPCs starts to scream. And, ah! You gotta get us out of here! I'm not oh. gonna die. Rena's gonna go over and, you know, like, grab her by the shoulders and be like, You gotta be quiet! Why is that? Listen to me, they are attracted to noise. When I was up at Stormy Point, there's a whole mess of them. They're attracted to movement and noise. That's why they're all coming this way, those fucking Looney Tunes out on the lake shooting it up. We just need Woo! a cop. Woo! Stay calm, be quiet, let this little swarm go past us, we'll assess from there. Everybody, be quiet. be surprised if these were some meth heads. Big around here. Believe me, if they are, we don't want them in here. So we don't want to track them with noise either, she says, looking at the woman who's, you know, getting hysterical. Ben kind of looks to Danny. He's like, "Do you, uh, you armed? You know how to shoot?" Yeah, she's got a. She turns around. She's got a pistol tucked in the back of her pants. You know how to use one of these, and he kind of like holds his shotgun. Well, everybody knows how to use a shotgun. Shoot one with the slugs. I'm gonna knock that shoulder out if you're not careful. If you know how to do it, though, I'll let you use this for the time being. 
Um, what are the skills again? Is range divided? No, I don't think so. No, just range. Okay. Range. Well, then I'll take the shotgun. Yeah, as he hands it over to you, he goes, Look, that doesn't have any sentimental attachment to me, but I want that back when it's all said and done. Alright. As soon as it runs out of bullets, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> or shells, anyway. <laughs> yeah, he, he hands her a couple, like, um, not necessarily a bandolier, but just uh, some extra shells. He's like, you might need these. I got more, so stay close. And she nods and gives a grim smile. The problem with being downstairs is with the windows all boarded up and stuff, it's hard to see out. But I suppose there's probably some still so still some cracks with the light from outside coming in. Try to peer out, keep an eye on it. What do you guys see up there, out on that lake? Well, we know that there's a raft, and it's got some of some hikers on it. Ethan and Olivia came over here to see if they could take all take shelter here, and told them no, there's no room for everyone. But they could go help us try to secure the hotel, and then there'd be room for everybody, but she's like, eh. we gotta, we gotta get past this morning first. Ethan kind of comes up to you, say, so, what do you see out there? A raft? No, I didn't see the raft. That's what you told me was out there. All oh, I know is that you. there's some hooligans out there causing trouble. These aren't any just hooligans. I, I'm thinking these are the ones that ran us off of Bella Vista property. We don't want to mess with them. We need to leave. You know, those other ten people in that pontoon. Fuck them, man. Let's go. Go hey, where? They're not going anywhere. I mean, so far they haven't even left the water. If we all keep it down here, they may, they may pass it by. And if they do come, well, they're not getting in. How many of them are there? I don't know how many there are. Four, five, ten. I don't know, man. They rolled up on a couple Harleys, a pickup truck, some sedan that looked like it was out of the 1970s. Shit. And then you hear feedback, like, you know, feedback from a microphone, like from a bullhorn. Boing! Real loud across the water. And you hear a voice go, Oh, Olivia! Come on out here. We know you went ashore. We got your friends. And Olivia, who has been the calm and collected one now, her eyes go very wide. You hear Where another calling gunshot. Your name. My friends. You know, we we came down here to get, get away from it all. Get get away from Springfield and all that shit going down in St. Louis. They must have them. There's nothing you can do about it now. We just got to stay in here. What are we going to go out there? There's a bunch of those zombie fuckers out there. There's nothing we can do. I think we got to position ourselves on the roof again. Here, you know, we've got some protection, but we they'll, they'll eventually make their way in, and then we're all going to be fish in a barrel. Out there... We've got the advantage of height, we've got cover, and we've got, you know, perspective. And they won't be able to just bust in because we'll be shooting at them. Yeah, plus there's plenty of those things out there that might get eaten before they even get to us. We can hope. Yeah, but I agree. On the roof with everybody with guns. Lay down, make yourself a small target. I mean, that sounds smart, right? She kind of looks at the people who have sounded like they've got some sort of experience with this. <laughs> yeah, Jake looks to Connor and the other guy, I can't remember his name. Ben? Yeah, you. <laughs> it's been 22 days, remember? <laughs> Cancer affects the memory, I get it. Right, exactly. <laughs> Well, my, 
I, I agree. A best defense is good offense, and getting the first shot might make the difference you know, with a group of psychos, or whatever they are out there. But out of concern, we draw those zombies to us. We're going to be in a mess of trouble. We're going to be surrounded. I don't know. We have enough ammo to take them out. I know. I'm just saying, if they come this way, they're going to force the issue. I'm not saying we start shooting at them until they get here, but if they do, I mean, what else is there to do? We can't let them inside. No. Hey, I'll stay down here, guard the door, make sure uh, none of these people get loud. That's not a bad idea. Make sure none of them trying to make a break for it either. Some people are getting a little edgy. You got something to give them to take the edge off? There's a lot of booze in there. <laughs> I ain't talking booze. And he kind of looks towards um, freaking the dealer. Bill, he he yeah. looks at you when he said when you say that, and he kind of like scratches his head. Uh, I don't have enough for. <laughs> I'm not sharing. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Bill, Bill, you don't need enough for everybody. You just need enough for the ones with that are going to be a problem. Yeah, I guess. Hopefully nobody has a problem, though. All right, then. You're going to stay down here. The rest of us will get up top. Do you think you can go amongst these people? I know a couple of them are armed. Find out who you got yourself, a little posse, a little militia, and hold the fort down here for the moment. Yeah, it sounds, sounds all right. He kind of looks at the, the group of huddled people, the men, the women, the children. He kind of leans into... Bill, he goes, I want you to give me your word. You're going to watch after these kids. You hear me? Yeah, 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 sure. No problem. He kind of like does the narrowed eyes like, hmm, that sure didn't seem very convincing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not very convincing and uh, Bill, Bill, like, just nods and uh, kind of looks out the window, and then he looks back and he says, "says Yeah, I got this, man." Okay, Connor, you've been awfully quiet. What are you thinking? So, let me get this straight. Uh, the butcher's heading towards us. Is that correct? Uh, you yeah. know, all you know is there's yeah. there's there's a couple boats probably out in the middle of the lake, and you hear gunshots and screams. Uh, that's drawing the horde down upon you. Down, they're slowly kind of shuffling towards you guys. Threat level's three. They're 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 in your direction, but they're not super super close yet. Probably you know fifty yards or something like that. All right. But uh, but the guy called it out on the bullhorn for Olivia, and if he's really determined. I'm just worried mm -hmm. they are going to come. I'm not saying we should call attention to ourselves. Yeah, my, my thoughts, you guys tell me if you disagree. My thought, let that little swarm up there, that mass of undead, let them walk past this place towards the water. Then we can get up on that roof. We get up on that roof. They're going to be pounding on these doors. We're going to be fucked. But, Bo, can you, uh, can you kind of just give us a general idea of where the undead are mostly and where the water is? Yep. There you go. Okay. So, uh, so the clubhouse is here. Yeah. Uh, they're like right. The undead are going. You can zoom in here. Yeah. I'm zoom in. Uh, like round, round here, this right. direction. Okay. And they're heading and, towards the water diagonally from there. Yeah, like the boat's probably like down here off the map a little bit. Like they're probably you know, hundred hundred meters out or something like that. See, Connor's Connor's going to be looking around and. Uh, with no, the threat of the zombies to the north and the people shooting, drawing the attention of the zombies, and the fact that somebody's about to rat him out for coming to shore here, um, he's going to look around and say, "We shouldn't stay here. We should move. When the horde moves, when that zombie horde moves past us, we should move. If those guys from the boat come on shore and they're going to start fighting the zombies, we're going to start fighting them. We're going to be swarmed. We're gonna, we we have, have a girl no here just had surgery. We can't move her." We're as good as dead if they surround this building. That would just stay quiet. They won't even know we're in here. We could stay quiet as a mouse, man. But if those people come on shore and start coming at us, 
Those zombies are going to be here as well. They, they, they won't get past the zombies. We could... We could try to draw them out somewhere else. She doesn't look too enthusiastic about this idea. She kind of points to her house. I mean... But we got, we you try to slip bodies. up and climb up onto a different roof, and if these assholes come ashore, we can draw them in a different direction, thus drawing the zombies in a different direction. And then maybe the zombies will catch up. We keep quiet, wait for them to disperse after um, things have quieted down. I don't know. You hear the bullhorn again. <laughs> Olivia! Come on now! Come on down to the shore! Bring your pretty little ass here. I'm gonna have some fun with you, girl. That's all it takes. Don't think you're gonna hold up with them motherfuckers at the resort. <laughs> They're not gonna help you. If you're listening to this, send that bitch down. You can keep her coward husband, Ethan, with you. Just send her down. I won't leave you alone. Uh, Bill's going to look over at the two and be like, what do they want with you two? Why are they after you? They got our friends. A couple of Ethan's cousins down there. I don't care about them cousins. They're dumb as box of rocks anyway. And you're not going nowhere either. You and me and... Baby, we're getting out of here alive and in one piece. I've been overhearing things. I like that idea about letting this swarm, this horde or whatever, pass us by. Don't know. About ready to shit myself. All right, well, if this place does get uh, attacked by the horde... We got a, a backup plan. You guys want to head for the hotel or something? At that point, it around us. I, I, I mean, on a long-term thing, I, I, I'm not going to leave that girl behind downstairs. She needs me still. But at this moment, what our strategy needs to be, I'm out of my depth. I'm, and she again kind of looks at um, Connor and, um, why can't anybody remember your name? I just remember it's Morton, but like Salt. Salty, <laughs> salty, old guy. Ben, yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I've only worked for you a year, it's fine if you don't remember my name. <laughs> and Ben, they seem to... I don't know. Have a better handle on it. Look, I, I don't have much expertise in dealing with psychotic undead cannibals that you have to shoot in the head to kill. Uh, that's kind of new to me. But I do know what a fatal funnel is. I do know what walls are. And I know these things are of intelligence. You gotta keep them out of here. And the best way to do it is not make noise and stay still. We got to use them to our advantage. Let them go towards that noise. Then we. Do you can think? Deal. Wait, and hope that before they come ashore, the walkers get to them. Yeah. Let let the walkers get to the shore. That'll prevent them from getting up there. Then we can get up on the roof. I kind of like your idea. Maybe a little bit of crossfire running over to your place. You know, so they got a. They don't just have one point to contend with. They got multiple. I do like okay. that, but again, we got to wait till this hundred zombies or whatever the fuck we want to call them are gets by. That's number one. Number two, once their backs are to us, we got to get up on that roof or get to a couple different positions and see what these psychos out on the water do. What are the chances we've got a pair of binoculars in the clubhouse? There's always I... like a little store. I just put one on my belt a little bit ago. Oh, cool. So we'll be able to see them before they see us, for sure. Yeah. Just reach on down there. I got something for you to look through. <laughs> oh, those are binoculars? The spyglass! <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> extended spy glass, I swear. <laughs> I think it's opening. <laughs> <laughs> Why are there two of them? Um... <laughs> that's just Jake. <laughs> but yeah, that's, um, I don't know. Yeah, I can get up on the roof, get these bad boys out, and he pats the binoculars on his belt and try and see well, how many there are or what we got going on. Um, I'm going to go down and try to keep things calm because pretty soon people are going to be saying we should throw Olivia out. <laughs> That's what she thinks. <laughs> She's seen people in a lot of high-pressure, life-and-death situations at the hospital, and sometimes the worst in people, and sometimes the best in people comes out, but you know, there's always going to be someone who reacts badly. As you walk down... Uh, is Bill down there with you? Yeah, he's down by the door, by the front door, probably, like, peeking through the uh, blinds. Yeah, as you do that, like, both Bill and Danny, you see Bella and Paul, actually, trying to calm down everybody with, without much help. And there's one guy that's pointing to Olivia and just saying, I'm sorry, but if it's me or her, it's going to be her. I got kids. I got three kids here. And I'm sorry, whatever your name is, Miss Olivia, but it's either you or us, and we need to give these bastards what they want, and they'll leave us alone. You hear us? There's some sort of sick, tormented assholes, and I don't know what they're going to do to you, Olivia, but... Danny picks up a for you. beer bottle, and she walks over to him. What are you going to do? Up. You going to start something here? I'm going to show you what they're going to do to her. Give her a little demonstration on yourself, and then you decide if that's a good idea. Ooh. Make me a, uh, um, uh, either manipulation or leadership role with a negative one, since he's worked up. Yeah. She doesn't necessarily mean it as a threat, uh, quite a threat as much as, a think about what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't have my character open, and now I'm having a hard, um, hard time finding it. PCs. Okay. Leadership. With. So under bonus dice, put negative one. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Nice. Success. Uh, so, so you, you will like intimidate him, or, or you know, or you know, shame him. him. I don't know. Yeah, whatever you are, role play it as. Yeah, he kind of looks shamed a, a little bit, um, and she just puts the beer bottle down in front of him, pulls out um, a bottle opener she always keeps in her pocket, and uh, pops the cap and hands it to him, and then walks over to Olivia. And she kind of says loud, that ain't happening. Nobody's getting handed to these motherfuckers. You give him one, you give a mouse a cookie, what does he want? Anybody? Two cookies. Milk? There you go. Well, Who's going to be the milk, you? huh? Who's going to be the milk? You're right, you're right. Thomas says. His name's Thomas. He has a hood on and a, and a mask, apparently. No. <laughs> <laughs> He, he said, I hear you, I hear you. I'm sorry, man, I'm scared. You got any kids? I just, oh, shit. Hey, we can all live together. We got to oh, be okay. quiet. We got to be quiet. And he'll start putting his, like, finger up to his lips. I want you to give me uh, leadership, too, Bill, since we're keeping these people cool. Everybody else is up on the roof, right? Yeah, I'm still on the roof. Alright, can I uh, uh, argue that uh, to use my fixer plus two manipulation? Mm, yes. Uh, if I want to... Uh, he's, he's basically just trying to say, um, yeah, I mean, we the plan is to be quiet, so everybody be quiet and don't move. And let them things go on by so they go after the those assholes over there. Oh, plus two. I forgot to put that in. But 
looks good anyway. Don't matter. Um, so I'll let you role play what it looks like, but there's a couple that was about ready to sneak out the back by the kitchen and make a yeah. run for it, and they kind of heard your reasoning, and they don't think that you saw them, but you did, and they kind of make their way back to the, the group. I'll let you kind of role play what it looks like. Yeah, he looks over and notices those two, like, talking about sneaking out and starting to make their way. And he Come says, on. hey, hey, we all got to just be quiet. And and maybe those things will just walk on by and go after those loud-ass motherfuckers with the guns. We just got to be quiet. Lay low. Don't move. And uh, he puts his finger to his lips again. And... Uh, He's pulling out his shovel now. He put the gun away, and he's, like, got that in his hands as he's, like, peeking towards the door. And he glances over at those two and then just kind of nods to them and then makes the get-down sign, you know? <clears throat> Go back up to the roof. Anything else? Otherwise, we have a cut scene. Cut scene. Got seen. Oh, Lord. Go down to the party pontoon. You should see the <laughs> picture. Isn't that great how AI did that? It's like exactly what I wanted. Yeah, wow. I want to know what you put in the... Like, as the, the ask. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? It was an uh, image of a pontoon boat in the middle of the lake early morning. It has ten people on board who look hungry, tired, and scared. A ski boat is approaching them. On the ski boat is a woman in her early 40s and four men in their 40s as well. Uh, the individuals on that ski boat all have guns. <laughs> wow. Nice. J just before dawn, Wilson heard an outboard motor in the distance. He and the other nine survivors floating on a pontoon in the middle of Table Rock Lake grimaced. They didn't want company, at least not this kind. Not after what happened at Villa Vista. Along with some friends and a few cousins and their families, Wilson, a systems analyst from a small manufacturing company out of Springfield, planned on spending a few weeks down in Branson to get away with it all. Civil unrest wasn't his cup of tea, it seems. Yeah, Bella Vista was pricey, but split several ways, it wasn't a big deal. That wasn't until Peckerwood and the goons showed up. They rode in on Harleys, a pickup and a sedan that must have been from the 70s. But that was yesterday. They made it out alive, barely. Now they float here with a few gallons of gas left. The motor gets louder. Wilson can see now several individuals on a broad base ski or speedboat. They're whooping and yelling, whoo! Even in the apocalypse, it's too early for that. Wilson stands up speaking for his group with his hands raised. Listen, just, uh, just let us be. We don't have nothing you want. You already done cleaned us out. We left what we had back of the house. The ski boat's closer now, maybe 30 yards. A bald man speaks out, a rifle raised and pointed at Wilson. No, my friend, the rough looking man says. There's more to life than riches, as they say. He laughs, brings the gun to his shoulders, aims down the sights and pulls the trigger. Wilson's head explodes like a ripe watermelon. His family screams as the water is slipped with greasy blood that looks purple in the early morning light. The screaming stops as the other two aim weapons at the pontoon. Arg, matey! One of the bald man crew's guffaws. Stand by to be boarded and surrender the booty! Trina Bell pistol whips the man known as Peckerwood. Shut the fuck up, you half-breed cretin! Her smile is kind at first, but then changes to that of a feral cat. Butcher and I are gonna Take turns first. She points to a young brunette with perfect breasts and scared eyes and a slightly older woman with augmentations. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a cunt by her toe. If she hollers, let her go. Eeny, meeny, 
Mighty Mo. Woo! And you just hear gunshot from across the, the the water, and that's what you're hearing. I won't describe it all, but there's a lot of violence, sexual and otherwise. And we're going to move back to the clubhouse, to the top of the, uh, on the roof, where the boat, the ski boat, seems to be drifting closer and closer. And it seems that that pontoon you can see is slowly, slowly sinking under the waves. Rooftop gang, take away. Now that the swarm has kind of gone by them, Ben is laying on the roof, the pitch side away from the lake, um, the rifle slung over his shoulder, his binoculars out, looking out on the lake, trying to see what's going on and what they're up against. Yeah, you can see all the shit that's happening, man. He just kind of mumbles to the others. He goes, this ain't good. And he kind of looks to Danny and he thinks of Brandy Lynn and the girls downstairs and the women. He goes, this is very, very bad. I mean, if, if these zombies weren't here, we could ambush them maybe. I don't know. We still can. Well, let's think about this. They have to come ashore somewhere. They're probably going to come to one of the slips, right? Yeah. Yep. We could, uh... I don't know. Somebody hide underneath the slip when they come in and shoot them when they come up get out of their boat why get up and close and personal when we can't pick them off farther away well i mean i'm not much of a shot man i mean those things were in the water they almost put connor in when we left my trailer yeah it's true i mean danny's house is just over there and he kind of points to the to the northwest, I believe that's where her house was at least. Yeah. I mean, if, if, they, we, uh, if we leave all these people, that some of them are going to lose their nerve and try to run, open the doors. I'm not saying all. I'm the only one here with the assault rifle. Everybody else got pistol and shotguns. Myself and maybe one other person. If I get over there, if they make it on the shore and they try and come through the front door here, once they realize that back door is too, uh, reinforced I can take a few shots at him once they turn their attention towards me you guys can take him out from the backside the only thing is the element of surprise you got to keep quiet in there until I spring that trap draw their attention what if they just come up to the front door and start just shooting well then I'll start shooting hello it's not like I'm gonna wait if they come up and immediately start shooting, or the second they start trying to force that door open, I'm going to put a round in one of their heads. And they still got to contend with that swarm down there, too. Maybe they'll decide to head for greener pastures if they don't think they can get around that. I mean, there's a hundred of them. Yeah. They're going to have to be dealt with some way, but I don't think they're moving on anytime soon. I mean, I'll, I'll listen, I'll do whatever you think, man. Yeah, I mean, you and Connor know, know more about this stuff. I mean, Connor's the one that's got a shotgun and a freaking body armor on there. He's the one that can take a shot up point blank. You gotta ask him what he thinks is he should do. Yeah, he looks at Connor. Oh, what, what do you want to do? Are you 
You muted? Are you napping? <laughs> Who would have thought a fed was scared silent? <laughs> <laughs> the three of you guys, are you all just up on the roof? Are you trying to stay low? And that's yeah, sort of I'm thing? laying down. So like if you see where Jake is, you know how it's a slanted mm -hmm. pitched roof? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I'm basically, he's on that side. Let me move my guys more representative. He's laying down on there. Basically, you only would see his head and maybe his binoculars towards uh, the water as he kind of talks to, to Jake and Danny. I want the three of you, three of you guys to give me stealths. Uh, no pluses or minus, just a straight one because because they have something that would counteract it. So. Hmm. I'll push. Good oh, God, God, man. Five successes. Yeah, but I messed up still. Doesn't have to be right away. You can fuck up later. It mm -hmm. does. You made a big sound. Something happened. You almost fell off the roof. But I, su but I succeeded. So I had to try. Oh, but no, no. You attracted the zombies. You're still not going to get shot at, but... You messed up, you succeeded, but you messed up in some way. So the threat level increases to four as they now start to head towards the clubhouse. What does that look like, Ted? Uh, Jake is looking around, talking, and he just starts coughing. Um, he hasn't had a drink in a while. He's kind of feeling a little crappy, dehydrated not himself getting the shakes he just starts coughing and he can't like can't really uh keep it keep it from happening and just he just, just tries to muffle himself but is just unable to to get ahead of it and just coughs loudly for a few minutes you see them all just kind of change their direction minutely and start to shamble towards the clubhouse. Um, ben. I'm waiting for Sim to probably reboot or whatever he's doing. I'm not sure what he's doing here. I don't know what unfrozen means. Maybe he, the foundry is frozen? He has issues with his foundry, it seems. Can you hear us, Sim? Uh, who's on the roof besides me and uh, Jake and Connor? Danny, is that correct? Well, I was, I was, I went down to calm yeah, people down. Right. So, right. so I'm. I think that time-wise, this is all probably happening at the same mm. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want. I, I just. This is could potentially be big, so I don't want Sim to miss out. Mm-hmm. Five-minute break. Sure. Sounds good. I got pee anyway. I shall return.
He's still on Foundry. That happens. Sometimes I think it's what is it, like Bo has to reset. Hmm. Alright, we're back. You flying down to Dominican? No, I'm driving. No, oh, Mike, he's a smart ass motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's gonna be a long, long flight. I have to be at the airport at like 5 in the morning. I'm trying to think, probably fly what to Miami and then to Dominican from there? I think it's non stop. Oh, that'd be nice. It's still gonna be really long though. Let me look. I've got it on my phone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. There you are. Here I am. I have to wait for this uh, foundry or whatever it is to realize I'm gone so I can join back in. Yeah, that happened to me too. To reset or something. Hey, it, it'll it'll pick up. It just takes Last like time. ten minutes or so, give or take. Any luck? Is he back? He's back. He's but I think that his his foundry's frozen <coughs> as well, but Yeah, I gotta wait for it to realize I'm gone. You need to uh, kick you? Yeah, you could try it. I think uh sometimes it works. I kicked you. Maybe just refresh it now. Yeah, let me reopen it. You could hear us when we were talking though, right? Yep, yep. Somewhat, and then it cut out, but then it had me in Discord still. That was pretty weird. <laughs> that was weird. All right, you should be kicked now. You're not showing up on my end. All right. And it's still, uh, it still says I'm in game. Give me a minute. No, I still only join as Bowler Zypher. That makes, uh, what? That makes no sense. Maybe try copying uh, address for the VTT and put it in a different browser. Mm -hmm. Clearing your cache. We can just role play it in the meantime. You want yeah. me to roll your stealth for you? Only if you succeed, you can roll. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You. I hope you get this. <laughs> Automatic success. If you if you fail, he gets to re-roll it. <laughs> yeah, he he broke. Do up. you have any he talents or anything? <laughs> I wonder if it's something with this module because on tour you you never had this and it seems like every session something happens. Yeah, I I don't know what it is. It's just I, it could be even just the Chrome or something causing it, right? Yep, still no go. It still thinks I'm there. Hmm. Let me try this. Sometimes, like, if I go all the way back to the menu, it picks it up, but it doesn't this time. Okay. Yeah, like Slip was saying, can you try, like, Firefox or Edge or something else? Yeah, no, all three of my browsers. Uh, really? Same, mm -hmm. yeah. Here, Let me look at um, user management. Let me see if I can log out here. Um, 
logged out of everything. Uh, I'm seeing you in the game now. You rejoined it. Negative. I'm looking at uh, Flight Goblins, not servers. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't see him in. Right, I just kicked you again. I kicked you from the world. I kick you and I kick you and I kick you. I kicked you from the world. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll it, buddy. Hey, there I am. Hey, <laughs> just in time. <laughs> I think I, I think I read the Uber roll so I could blame you for it. <laughs> Are you in now? Now, I'm, now you're showing up. All right. So what am I rolling stealth? Yeah. Hmm. Push. Man. Just give me that stress there. Let's see if Eve even saw you to begin with. Let's look. Two successes, but it's often not if Ted made that mistake. Well. Oh, he misses anyway. We haven't attracted so, them yet. Yeah, so across the... Uh, um, across the water, you wouldn't see this, but but uh, you know they're kind of that that pontoon sunk now. It looks like they've taken some prisoners, and, and their boats just kind of moseying up a little closer. They're, they're still pretty far away, still in extreme range. But the butcher has a very high powered weapon, and just kind of like the cutscene shows him, you know, like in the movies, you see the through the scope view, right? And like the scope pans across the trees and hands across the rooftop and he sees like some shingles fall down from the roof from where Jake slipped or whatever and like the scope goes up to where it, it seems like they would have come from and for some reason he doesn't see anything and continues to scan across the roof and he says to, to Trina hey baby I don't see anybody up there what do you want to do call for Olivia again get her ass out here I know there's more of them than there are us yeah. We got guns, says Jim, one of the other uh, war pigs. <laughs> and Trina says, Yeah, we got fucking guns. They got fucking guns too. This is goddamn Missouri, you goddamn Cretan cunt. Let me, let me pull out, uh, let me pull out the, uh, the other two of this gang here. Jim and Larry. And uh, Trina goes, send the shot that way. See what happens. And uh, you, you guys hear a pop. And what seems to be a high caliber bullet just shoop, streaks right over your head, Jake. Yeah, he's flat on the roof now. He's like, motherfucker. Stay down, Peter White. And he kind of slides down on the <clears throat> reverse pitch, and he's like not even going to bother looking because clearly he probably saw he has a, a hunting rifle or a, a high-powered rifle when he was looking through the binoculars. Yeah, he's got a sniper rifle as far as the game goes, but you can, it's probably not military, but you know, like yeah. one of those big fuckers they hunt mule deer with. Yeah, he, he kind of looks down. He slides down and goes, Keep your fucking head down. That dude's got a 30 odd six. Looks like he's got a nice little fucking scope on it, too. You just stay down. Don't present the target. Wait it out. I'll, be, I'll move over to the other side here in a little bit, or the other end of the roof. Take a look, but I'm going to wait. Just kind of listen to that boat. If it sounds like we're getting closer, then I'll. I'll uh, look but for now. Let's just be quiet. And he kind of takes the walkie-talkie that they've had and kind of turns it on real low to whoever was in, left with the down BP or whomever. Hey, don't worry about that gunshot. You heard me. Just be quiet. Everything's fine. You hear me? 
you hear a gunshot that seems like it was maybe a lot closer um, uh, on the inside. Um, Baker and uh, and Danny. And you see Jim looking out the front door, like between the slats, that the uh, horde, unfortunately, has changed directions, is now coming uh, directly towards the clubhouse and probably will be there in a few minutes. They're coming closer. Danny just keeps uh, saying to the rest of them, let him get drawn to the others. Jim? Has he gone to? You mean Bill? Bill Baker? Oh, Bill Baker. Bill Baker. Oh, why, does it say Jim? why does it say Jim Baker? That was we his all... name a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> he lied and told us <laughs> the wrong name. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was when I first I changed it like the you first. You never day. say I'm dead if you don't have my name. <laughs> there you go. I changed it. I changed it. There you go. <laughs> but Bill, you see that they're not going. They're not going to pass the you by. They're 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 going for some reason. You don't know about the 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 roof mess up. They're they're coming towards the clubhouse now. Hmm. All right. Um, is anybody else noticing that? Uh, roll me a, uh, a 2d6, and uh, we'll do a double low, and if you get something uh, three or under, uh, then yeah, they start to panic because of the NPCC. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the dude. The dude that, uh, that Danny... Well, no, it's, uh, it's Ethan. He's kind of cowardly. He starts to say, Hey, sweetie, Olivia, look. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. We're between a rock and a hard place. We gotta go. We gotta go, baby. Let's go. Get a hold of yourself, Ethan. She slaps him. Where are we gonna go? There's no place to run to. We either die here... ...or we expect a miracle. Bill's gonna be like, stick to the plan. Just be quiet. Keep down. Don't let him see you. The dead get closer and closer and closer to the house. What are you guys doing on the roof? I'm keeping my head down. Yeah, he says this. Don't move. Let the idiots on the water draw them away. They'll call for Olivia. They'll take another shot. Just don't move. Yeah, he definitely is planning on moving. Yeah. Uh, Bill's just like leaning up against the, uh, the wall next to the door. Uh, uh, I guess the there's something like the door's locked or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We have we have something barricaded uh -huh. in, maybe or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so he's just leaning up there, and uh, yeah, they're, they're filtering like all through these woods now, and like starting to rub up against the house. And some of them are starting to even like come up against the windows, you know, like thumping against it, running up against it. Some of them are starting to claw at the windows. A few he's of the kids a whimper. He's, he's got a shovel in his hand, and uh, he's got a finger to his lips, like, looking at the other people. <laughs> and he's just kind of praying that nobody messes up. That's when you hear the sound of glass break as one of them puts a decomposed, partly hand through one of the cracks in the slats and <laughs> crashes through. crashes through the window and the kids start to cry and Ethan starts to say, Ah, oh, god damn it! God damn it! And he kind of goes towards where the hand is and, and he takes the, the the butt of his pistol and starts slamming against it like the hand's gonna fucking 
retract from the, the pain of that. And instead, it just grabs his hand and bites into it. Wait, wait, his head is through? No, it stuck its hand through the window and grabbed Ethan. And then pulled Ethan out? Yeah, just like... Okay, I didn't his... realize there was that much It has a hole in its hand, just like tearing the skin off of his dirty okay. fingernails. Uh, <laughs> if, if it looked like he had... That this thing had gotten through enough that it was... I just took its hand through. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I was picturing Danny getting ready to shoot when there was more of it visible and not just a hand. But it sounds like it's already bit him, and it did that too quickly for her to react. Or I'm just trying to picture how it's biting him it through the bite window. Him. It, it like grabbed his hand. Like it grabbed. Oh, okay. Him. I thought yeah. you said it bit him. All right. Um, well, he did say it bit him. He gr it grabbed his hand yeah, and pulled yeah, his hand yeah, out the yeah. window. And it oh, bit it him. pulled his Take hand it. out the window. Okay. I think that's the way I understood it. All right. Um, well, that sucks. I'm going to... I don't think Vanny, Danny feels like she's got a choice. She walks over to where the window is. Like, pictures where on the other side, through that flat, the head of this thing would be. And tries to fire through the wood. Because still, I, I, I'm assuming it's kind of like visually obscured. Yeah, you don't even need to roll. You can just tell, tell me what it looks like as you shoot the thing in its head or whatever. Yeah, um, she walks up to the window and she's just like wincing as she uh, looks at this guy's struggle, getting pulled against the window, you know, probably screaming as his hand gets bitten into and uh, closes her eyes almost um, as she's places the pistol against the against the wood and the sound of the gun even against the sound of his screaming sounds so loud in her ears but she does hear the thump of the body on the other side roll me a 1d6 and that's how many minutes you have before the inside inside starts to get overrun you got six minutes. Uh, Bill, they start to claw at the door. All right. Danny says everybody on the roof. They all start to, like, go towards the steps and start to file up onto the roof. She starts it's looking. 30, 30, uh, it's like 25 people now down there. What the, what the fuck is going on down there? They're getting through. Yeah, yeah you hear you hear the sound of breaking glass um, from from downstairs. So I don't know if they can climb. If we get everybody up here, we can knock off over the ladder. And she's looking around for like trees or like the best, the shortest area of the roof for people to jump. But she's thinking about that sick girl, and she's like, she's not gonna make it. <laughs> Jake is like, wait, wait, wait! If you come up here, he'll shoot. They they got a guy with a scope. He's taking yeah. pot shots at us. Don't come up. Uh, question real quick, Bo. As I'm looking from the roof, are they all on the what would be the northwest side of the building, or are they surrounding? The uh, they're they're down. Oh oh, the zombies. Yes. They're like probably like here at the front, here, probably this probably probably the south side's clear at this point. So the south side and the south. I'm, I'm gonna side I'm, are I'm just gonna draw. Clear. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna draw on it here. Let's see. I just want to. I'm trying to. Kind of like, recommendation. They're kind of like in a like here. Does that I mean, make what sense? else is there to do? I could make a Molotov cocktail or two and throw them and see if it'll make them disperse. Well, that ain't gonna do nothing. I ran over them. That do nothing. It's it's gonna have to be us up front. And you guys are gonna have to be shooting down. That's that's our only option now. We're fucked. Otherwise, we gotta run as a group somewhere else. I mean, we can't. We can't run. There's no way to get out. Connor's gonna look around. <sighs> well, we need to get out one way. The divert them away. Start shooting at them. Taking pop shots. Let them hear us. Let them see us run. Yeah, if the majority of them are on the northwest side, isn't the access door to, like, the kitchen and stuff on the south side or the... Let me move for my character where I'm talking about. Like, right here? Or where's the... the access door to the back yeah i thought they came in here i thought that kitchen door would be down here somewhere oh, that's maybe fine. all right well 
Yeah. We could, I guess, try to make enough noise and lure them out toward the boat. Connor looks over and um, he starts going south on the roof. He's uh, he's gonna jump off the roof onto that garage there. No. Oh. And then he's gonna hop down where there's no zombies at. And he's gonna give me uh, yeah, give me uh, athletics or whatever the equivalent is there. As he's going, he's like. Connor, get him out that it's, back door. Uh, mobility. Leave mobility, him that's it. Mobility or agility? It's mobility. Mo, big mo. Oh! You push. What does it look like as you jump onto the roof? You almost slip off. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can hear the asphalt as he's running across the roof, right? And you can hear all the gravel fall and then you hear him hop and he you hear a slide uh but he catches himself and then he lowers himself uh through the edge of the the roof here and gives himself a soft drop right yep and then from there he's uh he's gonna run uh that way and while he's running, he's, he's going to start shooting. His, his plan is to uh, run to the west a bit and then start running north so he gets his ha at least half the attention. Got it. So, so as you're doing that, you pop up and run across. Yeah, doing that, you know, from the from the lake, you see a scope kind of scanning the roof as well. And they see you kind of pop up and start to run across the roof. He can see you. And he's going to make a shot at a negative two. There was a negative two, though? Yep. He's good. You get shot for two damage. You got body armor on, buddy. Soak that shit. Oh, you do? Yeah. How much? Armor Roll level armor. six. Oh, nice. That soaks that all? Uh, you have rough to roll it. It works like a Coriolis. It does. That's nice. how he almost falls. He gets shot and almost. Yeah, just, just narratively, tell me what's going on here. Yeah, so as he <laughs> as, as, <laughs> as the bullet hits him, uh, right, he almost he loses his balance there and almost slides off. Uh, you could tell he took a hit, um, but he keeps moving, right? Yeah. You're like down here then? No, nah, he's gonna drop off right there because okay. he wants he wants the attention of these ones right here as he oh, runs. They, st they start heading towards you and I think we can probably enter the uh, the swarm phase now um, I'm gonna give you one chance to decrease your threat level by one which will decrease your swarm score by one Connor depending on on how you're trying to help this group but kind of tell me what you're trying to do and we'll figure out the check you need to make to uh, be successful well, once he lands, he's going to run. And he's going to start shooting, right? And make noise. He's going to shoot at him. He's going to shoot, try to shoot him, right? Yeah. Um, but he wants the noise. And then he's going to... Just This is just where he's trying to go, right? He's not actually there. But the next step will be up here. And then keep shooting. And then he's going to head towards the northwest. Just give me a ranged combat check, then. All right. Yeah, the idea is to draw at least half towards the northwest there. Nope. Oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> you know what happens. You know what happens <laughs> if you're down around them, right? Yeah. What skill do you want to use? To combat this zombie attack. Oh. oh damn, I think I'm hosed either way. Any way I go. Um, well, bust out of the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> so we in close combat with them? You can use, yeah, yeah. Or I mean, pop of it's, range it's again. It's all kind of narrative. You can even use stealth. Oh, if it's, it's a swarm size of, th of four. I don't think you can use stealth, actually. All right. Um, 
Yeah, as they get as they close in, I guess he's try to shoot them again. Would be his best bet. Range combat. What does it look like as you shoot one of them, but behind you another one comes up? So yeah, as he as he as he runs through, he, he you know he gets his shots off. He slips up and he stands up. And he kind of takes a deep breath, takes another shot at one that's close to him, not realizing that there's one behind him. Uh, yeah. Then he hears some uh, twigs, you know, like twigs breaking or something. Then he turns. How close would he be? Well, it's a priest with a rotten and almost falling apart over uh, the, you know, maybe he was already dead when all this started. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes up behind you in his, his frock and grabs you. <laughs> What do you do? You gonna try to turn around and pop him in the head? Um, yeah, I'm gonna use my drive here. It does what it takes, right? Because uh, I kind of should have popped it earlier, but um, I forget what the drive does though. How was the bonus on that? My book closed. Plus two, I believe. All right. Yeah, he's he's gonna try to um, so the I don't know, mirror to with the shotgun here. Um. Yeah, he's gonna try to do it like, I guess like a spin to get an angle so he can shoot him. Right? He's not necessarily trying to kill it. He just wants the the impact to probably, hopefully, pulls it off him. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, being in close or like, pulls a hole enough that he can uh, pull apart. So yeah, uh, he'll do it. Convert. <laughs> William is dead. <laughs> Oh no! Another one! Another one! I'm gonna roll for what happens here for the mess up. Overall situation gets worse. House collapses, fall out, slips. Alright, the rest of you guys. How could this get worse? Like for... For Sim. Us? For oh, Sim. for Sim? Uh, I don't know, there's more to the north of him? Falls down. I mean, falls down, drops his gun, gets ripped out of his hand, so he'll have to come back for it later. That gun, gun, gun gets ripped out of his hand. Sounds good to me. So you're you're here with no gun in hand, there, Connor. That's f that's fine. Are they still moving towards me? Yeah, they're still around you, but we're going to enter the swarm phase now. All right, so we need four. We need four people to make rolls. All right. I have stress, so don't not me. Can uh, Danny do a leadership roll, like help? She can. That does not count as one of the four, and you get to hand out that many successes as bonus dice to folks as bonuses. All right, I will do that. Now if you mess up on your leadership roll, which I don't think you you don't have stress yet, right? So no. All right, I'm gonna roll it. I don't know. I'm gonna push. I'll take stress. Oh, I got one success. There you go. So you can hand out at least one one success to your group. Mm -hmm. Or one bonus die. Do I pick a specific person? You can just hand it out whenever. Okay. And then we need uh, four people to roll so the rest of you guys can roll. Um, yeah, Ben's gonna do what he does. He puts that selector switch to fire because he sees the ill-advised plan of Connor, who has just avoided death time and time again. <laughs> Ill-favored. Ill yes, Ill Ill He's the Rick Grimes of this game. <laughs> However, he just <coughs> finds a way to live, but it is looking bad. He understood what the plan was, and um, it's not working. So he's going to start picking off zombies as best he can. Now... As you do that, you guys are going to give your way your positions. Well, they obviously know you're all up there, right? Oh yeah, they so, saw one person had shot at him. So, so there might you might draw fire. So I'm on the opposite side of the house. How can he shoot at us? Okay, that's fine. Makes sense. Um, like, so you're like on the other side of the roof, where they don't have an angle, like over here. 
yeah, that, my yeah. thought process being, yeah, when you're on that yeah. reverse slope and then they're in the water, so they're shooting up already, you're kind of like in a natural cover. Yep. All right, let's see. Oh, well, that was nice. That's extremely nice. That's five of the eight you need. I'm not going to push. I'm not going to fucking... No, that's good. No whammies. No fucking whammies. No whammies. No whammies. All right. Bill uh, with the shovel um, inside trying to... Bill in the billiard room with the shovel. Yeah. <laughs> trying to keep them off the kids. So they yeah, get the kids... to like, come in through the front door. Ah! All right. Here we go. Um, no. oh, there's one success. Two successes yeah. amongst the next two people, and Danny can hand out a success to someone. She can hand out bonus die. Oh, bonus die, sorry. Okay, so it has to be pre-roll, basically? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You guys just say... You want to keep, keep that, Mr. Shovelman? Oh, push. what what are how do you um mess up? So once you, you get roll stress, one on stress, yeah, you have to roll a one. Yeah, so you don't have to put on the stress, stress die. Yeah. Oh, okay. So pushing's a good idea. Yeah. N well, yes, you'll have no. stress next time. Okay. Every time you push, you get one. So first time okay. it's fine. Okay, I do have this. Um, I don't know if that'll help me keep uh, the stress away. You don't take stress when walkers spot you. Nah, it wouldn't help in this situation, I don't think. Okay. All right, I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and push it. Uh, there we go. Now you got three. That's enough to bring it down level. You, you guys probably don't even want to roll, right? No. Jake thinks about shooting <laughs> and sees Ben shooting and goes, I'm good. That brings threat level down to three. Yeah. Bill's down there making a mess of things as they're coming into the windows. Actually, actually, it would be the size. The size would go down to three. That would make more sense. Um, I have a question. I don't know how this would work mechanically. Because as I'm staring at this picture, I see that blue truck yeah, up in the fun. corner by, uh, is her name Bella? That. That's what I was thinking about, too. Up here? No, up here? Yeah, well, here, here's what I'm thinking. If you remember all the way back to the first episode, my truck is parked out in front of this bar. Um, mechanically, would it be adventation at all just to reach into the old pockets, pull out the keys, and press the alarm to have them turn around and start shuffling that way? Maybe so. We'll trust it to luck. Oh, that's a good idea. I was thinking about something else. A rescue mission. But that's a good idea. I guess we'll wait till the next turn, round, whatever. All right, on to the next round. Danny, are you going to do leadership again? Did we get enough successes? Mm-hmm. You did. Okay. okay. So threat level went down to three. If you get to two, then they're like, uh, not, not close enough. Like, you could potentially even escape, although you're going to have... The war pigs after you. All right, one success. All right. Oh, cool. You can do that each round. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's cool. All right. I'll let, uh... uh well, I, I get, yeah, three. as, as Ben's shooting, he's almost... Ben, Ben Morton, for those that don't remember, um, he almost like hits himself with, as he's shooting in his peripheral vision, he sees his blue pickup truck with the topper on it, and he understands, he's kind of starting to understand what these things think of, and he reaches into his pocket, pulls out his fob, and then just hits the alarm button, the panic button, for the car alarm to start going off, to see if that helps Connor. Give me a D6, one through three, uh, no, and four through six, uh, Connor's gonna get some breathing room. 
No. No. Unfortunately, just a few more come out of the woods towards need, the truck. <laughs> who needs breathing room? <laughs> well, seeing that that was a catastrophic failure, he's going to go back to shooting. <laughs> All right, where's my gun? There it is. Has someone used get... the bonus point, the bonus dice yet? Uh, nobody's used it yet on this round. I mean, not, okay. it has, would... they, can they stack, or do you have to use them every round? Mm, what do you mean? Oh, like... oh. I think it's every round. Okay, so make sure they get used. What do we need for successes here? Seven. That's two. All right. Um, I'll roll with Connor here. Uh, I'm gonna use. What, what, my... it, what does it look like? It was Ben Morton. So Ben, what he's doing is he sees that that failed. He shifts his focus back. You know, he's got his forearm, uh, the soft part of his forearm, resting on his knee, and he just aims right back down sight, shooting along Stormy Point Road. Um, just trying to thin the herd out and uh, clear a path because they're going to have to adjust all those well-laid plans. And he kind of almost laughs thinking back to his past where they used to say no battle plan, you know, survives the first move of contact. He now on the boat goes, you hear that, baby? You hear the purr of that gun? That's a new toy for you. Let's go get it. All right, who's next? You want to go, Ted? I'm trying not to roll unless I have to because I have a bunch of stress already. <laughs> here, uh, uh, here, I'll go. Someone... Connor, Connor will go. Um, you got that bonus die there? Uh... Yeah. So this is what I'm going to do here. Um, since I'm close combat now, right? Um. I'm gonna do that and that. My steady hands and my skull cracker, which gives me no stress, plus two on my close combat. Oh, nice. And you can use that bonus die, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, I just really do it. Up. So, what is yeah, that? What, another, uh, is that what, another two? What, 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 yeah, what melee yeah. you got? Just gonna use like your rifle butt or something? No, nah, he doesn't have his rifle, so he's just gonna start grabbing him and uh, breaking skulls, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it's fine for walkers. <laughs> yeah. Any successes, so. Well, that's the only way. The only way I could use that is against walkers. So uh, let me do that here. Just gonna gently him. So you get three. Yeah, let me yeah, take off. Just, just, just roll. Just roll straight up. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I was at three, so let me do that. Oh my god. Ew. That's fucking ugly. Push? You can push it. Nah, so if I push it, that's gonna get Every me. Every zombie game. Seth so goes and jumps out of the window and runs out <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well this time I'm not running away from the dude, so we're good. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to actually survive this one. <laughs> so now if I... So, if I push it, I have to roll with all my stress then, right? Or no? I don't know. I would say you'd probably just roll the dice you rolled. I wouldn't make you do that. I think that would negate using that. Because because if you have I to... I would change the dice pool anyway. I, would, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do that either. Alright, so I'll push it. And I'll just, I'll just kind of do the same thing I just did, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then I'll still add my stress on, so that would give me four stress total afterwards. You still have the stress, but yeah, you don't have to you roll the dice. All right. No, uh, not too much. Better. Three is better. I don't like shit. So what? Yeah. Now you only have to get two more. Shit is better. How many people left that need to roll? Um, we got Bill Baker and then you. Bill, you try because I, I don't. You don't. You only have one stress. I have two. So. Okay. How, what's it look like if you just uh? Start grabbing these assholes. Yeah, so as the walkers get close, uh, Connor's not having seen his rifle uh, shotgun on the ground. Um, 
wishes he had it. <laughs> uh, and he just starts grabbing. He, he's just using his uh, close combat skills there that he learned when he was uh, through his life there. And you just start seeing him tossing them and, and hitting them and uh, breaking through their, you know, doing enough damage there that they're they're falling. He's just doing enough to clear them off from around him and uh, any opportunity he gets, he, you know, does something to try to take as many out as possible, whether it be, you know, snap, you know, if they're, if they're more bony, breaking their bones or whatnot or whatever, right? He's, he's, he's dropping a few of them as he goes. He's just punching them. <laughs> Nice. Bill Baker. Let's, um... Uh, let's push, huh? It oh, goes down the hill from there. One yep. gets in. One gets in. How do you react as, as one, like... The one kind of gets through a splintered part of that front door, grabs you, and kind of pulls himself into the, the clubhouse bar. He just plops on the ground in front of you and starts to reach for your legs. Let's see what type of walker he is. He's an addict, just like you. Maybe you know him. <laughs> one, one of the old customers. He has one hand missing. One hand missing. Um, how, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to try to smash his head in. Try to smash him? Okay, give me the roll. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Uh, can I use my uh, my drive? Yeah, you have you used it yet this session? No. Oh. <laughs> That's a little like. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he, just uh, when he he stumbles back, you know that one that's got his leg that he didn't see coming in. You know he's been he's been messing him up. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure, like, uh, you know, th through the windows and everything and keeping him out. And that one just came in and grabbed his leg. And uh, uh, he falls back as it's starting to crawl up him. Uh, and for a moment, he flashes uh, uh, the memory of his, his little boy and him trying to get to him. And, and if, he, if he doesn't kill this thing, you know, he's never going to get to him. So he takes the shovel and... Uh, uses the uh, the butt of it to just like crush the crush the side of its head. That's not much of a whack. <laughs> he um he rolls up and starts to look around, uh, see if the the people made it or the kids kids are okay and everything and. Uh, yeah, they're not. They're not. They haven't overrun the place yet. You have six minutes. There's like a couple minutes left, uh, unless maybe you fail this round. Uh, you still got to get two successes. I thought it was one. One now. Two How so? Two assault rifle. Three close combat. One shovel after he pushed it. No, so he. Six. Yeah, he, he failed the push. He failed the push. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, my bad. The, the, the success was just to avoid the attack. Oh. oh. So now, now it's all up the cancer boy. Now is it's all it, the cancer boy. Is it worth it for me to roll leadership this round? And I mean, I only have one stress. It's so. still second round. Yeah, we still got... Oh, oh, okay. Roll. I thought this was the new one. So what's um question? What would I be using... Here. Uh, you can you can use any skill that narratively fits what you want to do. Well, if I just want to keep hiding, can I roll stealth? <laughs> you can. <laughs> yeah, Jake. Oh wait, 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 is wait, wait, wait. I, don't, I don't think you can. Oh, threat level. What was that? Roll three. Yes, you it's can three roll now. Yeah. Yep, yep. You can roll it. <laughs> yeah, Jake just uh, he stays on the roof, keeps himself like very close to the to you know flat and. He's kind of looking down and he, he's getting his gun ready, um, or he already had it out, but he, he's staying very still, very quiet as possible. So, here's stealth. Yeah, right, exactly. But, no. You better push that. Oh my god. Of course yeah. I Hey! 
<laughs> this thing's thing... celebrating because it's dancing on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what the mess up is here. Oh no, I did I freeze again. Oh man! Which one so, do you want to do? Basically, uh, how would I get Walker attack? Uh, the only way you can get Walker attack is you say like narrative, like you you slip a little bit, like you're you like. No, it's good. so it would stay, I guess, because I lowered it with my successes, right? Yeah, yeah. So, it, so it's at three again. Yeah. I don't think it makes sense for him to slip the way he is. They start to come in now. More of the glass breaks. People inside start to absolutely scream. There's no control of them now. There's no leadership. This is 25 people stuck in a room that's being invaded by zombies. Um, so you guys won the round. So all your NPCs are still alive. Uh, let's start round three. Danny, do you want to do leadership again? Or what are you going to do? Um, I think that's how I can be the most useful. Because if I actually roll well... Ah! One each time! Yeah. I've got such yeah. a high leadership. Narratively, what are you doing? Narratively, okay, how is she helping them? She's keeping things calm downstairs. Um, maybe, um, because... Uh, calling out what she sees on either side to the people upstairs, I mean to the people on the roof, and um, maybe standing at the ladder and handing up ammo as they need it. Um, Perfect. At just generally keeping an air of calm and um, control so that nobody panics, including them. So, we'll start the next round here, round three, and uh, you guys can see the boat now getting a little bit closer, putting like it's uh, it's going in uh, uh, idle speed, closer to the uh, like where the slips are, and that happens to be like pretty far away from where the zombies are. So they're getting closer and closer to shore, and uh, boys on the roof, or Connor, what's up? Oh, did he freeze? He's frozen. Um, ben, if people don't mind, I'm going to use Danny's bonus dice because I'm also, now that they're starting to actually get into the clubhouse, you know, Ben can only think about the kids that are in there and it just really, it, it bugs him. It bugs him badly, so I'm going to use my drive. Uh, never tell me the odds for plus two and then plus one from hers as he just kind of like scoots up a little and leans over and just starts popping them as they're trying to go through the front door. So I will get an additional three bonus dice. Oh my god, I'm pushing that. Fucking wow. Fuck it, I'm pushing it. Dang. Thirteen dice. There, there we, go. we go. Oh my gosh, that's what we want to see. Seven. Just don't screw this up. He did. I know, but he messed up. A walker comes at him. Hippie professor with an arrow through the throat. Bust in through the door after you reach well, for you. What do you roof, do? Maybe as I like lean oh, you're on the, down. Oh, I, I thought you went down. down. No, I was up on the roof like leaning oh, over shooting. So maybe over I, like, the door. Okay, yeah, got I, I kind of yeah, I uh, maybe lose my footing a little or something like that. So he, he sees someone like reaching up at him, trying to grab him. Like maybe this hippie is like super tall for some reason. Uh, it's like Bill Walton. Yeah, Bill Walton. <laughs> he reaches for him, so he's going to shoot at him. Oh, God. You drop your assault rifle. Yep. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Right, as he's shooting, he shoots it in the head, but not before it, like, its hand is reaching up and it grabs, like, the barrel and the heat from the uh, barrel tip, like, sears into the undead meat, and as it falls back, it just, like, yanks it out of his hand, and he's like, fuck!
All right, well, All right boys. One success. And girl. We only need one more. I think I'm the last person everybody wants to roll. I think that's me. I'm going, going for it. Stress. No, 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 no. Nothing will get done then. Oh, Connor's got the most stress. Ben, uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get boy. back in. <laughs> it's all up to the addict. It's all up to the addict. <laughs> you can do it. I'm, I, oh. I literally am like Michael Jackson because I'm put, put one open like a little thing of popcorn. And then I'm watching this right now. <laughs> Come on, you fuckers. Oh, that's yes. it. There you go. Push it. You gonna push it? No! Oh, no! no. <laughs> Eating that popcorn. Yeah, push it. <laughs> Threat level? Boom. You're still going to overrun the inside, but you don't have time to get out. Yeah, he's going to look back as he's like smashes one's face. And uh, and he sees uh, out the window, I guess, probably uh, him drop the gun. He looks back at, uh, at Danny says we gotta get the fuck out of here we gotta get them kids to get out of here she kind of peeks out so how how bad is it out there now sounded like they kind of improved the situation a little bit yeah like there's there's it's still with the size there's still probably like a hundred of them but like the ones that are close um have been slain uh -huh. mm. what about noise from the boat Idle speed. Hmm? If if it's if it's if it's worth it, Connor will still start running and see if anybody chases him. What the zombies? Yeah. <laughs> you want to peel him off towards you? I mean, he's he, he wants to take as many away from that building as possible. He'll run from them. Okay. Tell me what it looks like. So, um, as he as he faces, you know, as the as the little horde around him dies down, with everybody shooting and hiding and everything else, um, and beating people with shovels, uh, Connor will pick up his shotgun again, and and he'll start heading north and start shooting. He just wants attention drawn towards him. And he's just gonna run. That sounds like a, a mobility or leadership. Um. Uh, I, I I would rule now. I mean, either way, it's all gonna it's all gonna lose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Because of my four stress size, it's, it's gonna it's gonna it's, it's gonna be a perpetual uh, spiral of mess ups. Um, Good. Just don't roll a one. Yeah. yeah uh, just don't roll a one. I still can't. It's easy. I still What's can't the next round, in. right? Third. Yeah, nine. we're. I don't think we're trying to. Well, yeah, you're, what are, you're not, what are you're we not doing? now because it's threat level two went down. So how you don't have to deal with them, but you guys are still stuck in there. And if you don't do anything, it, it's still going to be overrun. So once they engage the haven, it's it's like uh, depending on their defense and stuff. That d6 minutes is how long it takes before this thing gets overrun. But you guys are going to have time to escape now. The thirty survivors. Maybe you can help the named NPCs, but I think most of them are going to get bit. Well, I was going to say, yeah, um, I was going to try and continue shooting it, and, but how many successes do I need? If you want to just continue, continue to engage the swarm, we can do that. And you're down to, uh, um, uh, so six. So is half, is that half that we wanted cleared? Is that cleared? Is that enough for everybody to start running out of? Yeah. So we're going to have to abandon this place no matter what, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Um, Danny, I guess, realizes this. And she takes that. I mean, that girl can't probably walk right now. Is that mm -hmm. right? right? Yeah. She's going to look at the biggest, like, the girl's dad and someone else who's been not an asshole but who looks like he's strong enough to carry and you know tell them to take the tablecloth and kind of make a litter so that we can 
run with her to take a good grip on both sides. I mean, that's going to be the fastest only thing that we can do, I think. Take care of her, and then she's going to say, we have to... All right, we're going to make an organized run for it. We've got... They've got... They've cleared one side of the building. We're going to head away from here, and... Um, I mean, is my house too close? Are they kind of still milling around there? Yeah. Okay. She tries to think of a place where she can take them. Um, you know, she just maybe thinks of some cabins that are further in. Um, and we're going to eventually have to go to the hotel, but I don't, I don't think that this is the time. Some people are going to have to sit still and wait. Maybe those people can huddle down in, in one of the cabins, and so she, we'll she starts time. directing people there. Do uh, do we have a second for a breather, or...? Yeah. I do have time to do something. I think so. All right. Uh, so. All right, because, uh, yeah. Yeah, Bill's going to... Uh, snort a Roxy off the bar <laughs> <laughs> to get rid of one stress. You definitely have time for that, that role play. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're at the clubhouse. There's some there's some cottages here. Those are probably the closest ones. Unless there are ones down towards where the boar pigs are landing. You want to take your chances against them? Instead of the... <laughs> Have we cleared out like in front of the of the uh, bar? Yes, I would say so. All right, because basically I'm just going down the ladder. He's just going to hang off the edge and drop down and grab his AR and then open up the front door. And, and two reasons. One, it's safe to drop down. Two, if he goes up towards the ladder or gets on the other side, he knows he might get shot at. Mm -hmm. so he, yeah, he's going to knock on the door. Open up. It's clear for the moment. All right, she, we're going to open it up and start organizing people out. Yeah. yeah. Ben, ben runs in, grabs his A-bag. He goes over to Kat and Liz. It's time to go, girls. Um, Bill looks over at uh, Ben and uh, he's like, you ain't got a gun. I, he picked it up when he dropped down. Oh, okay, good. Good, good. So, um, he's got the shovel. His eyes are all wide now. Like, he's, like, you know, zipping. And, uh, he's like, all right. Licking his lips. All right, I'll, I'll guard you. Talking about the girls and the kids and stuff. Where are we going? What are we doing, boss? And he kind of looks at Danny. She points in the direction, you know, away from the fray, um, She's just going to try to trek people up toward the northernmost cabins on the property. We can head over to the hotel. She thinks about how long that would take. It's only, what, a couple hundred yards? You can make it. You guys want to make mobility rolls. What I'll do is like okay. I'll make it like a skill challenge. Um, yeah, mobility. So, so yeah, I'll make it like a skill challenge. So basically, everybody rolls mobility, and everybody, everybody has to succeed, or the person that fails will suffer a zombie attack. But if you get more than one success, you can hand those out as bonus dices to other people. Does that sound good? Okay. I'm ready for your guys' bonus dices. <laughs> <laughs> this is the great escape. This is a good good scene to kind of end it on. As you guys... If somebody shows told us, like, as you bust out of this thing with everybody running through the woods. There's probably They're probably all around, but they're kind of, like, 
spread out now. They're not packed in a big group. Um, and some, some people aren't going to make it from your group, obviously. And the war pigs are coming up on shore, too. <laughs> um, uh, narratively, just Bill Baker, tell me what this looks like. Bill opens up the door and uh, immediately, like, puts the shovel in one of the heads of the thing and shoves it back and uh, and starts to make his way, kind of like looking back at Danny and the kids and the others, uh, trying to keep keep the ones that are getting close off of them. Um, yeah, that's what he's doing. All right, guys. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your tokens, just kind of line them up for ease, and I'll make them big. Yeah, I'd probably imagine, you know, uh, some are coming out of the trees, some are, you know, coming around cars, uh, catching people off guard, grabbing people. Once they're bit, we leave them behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a scene. All right, let's 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 go on ahead. Danny, you're up first. Mobility, you said. All right. Mobility. Not my best, not my worst. No successes, I guess. I'm going to push it. There we go. But I, I messed say, up. Before you start pushing it, can everybody else roll to see if we can hand out dice, or is it... Um... Oh. Well, no. I mean, it, it builds up as you go along, right? Okay, okay. So, maybe I'm okay, but I am helping now, one's someone coming else after you. How, you how do you try to oh. avoid it or, or, or beat it? One's, one's coming after you. Um, let me see what life. Throw the girl at it. I'm going to shoot can't at always, it. You can't. You, can. you can sacrifice no. an NPC. I, I'm going to shoot at it with the shotgun. I don't okay. have that on my sheet, so I'm just going to shoot with the pistol or revolver and you uh, can... I, I can drop it on there for you. Okay. I'll drop it on there for you. I had it, I had it all, already up there. <laughs> one, one of those, one of the war pigs has one of those shotguns too. I was like, you can do that if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Ethan might be getting capped in the kneecap here. Yeah, let's get rid of that guy. He's sacrifice one. Worthless. Why? Why am I not? Why is that not dragging onto your cheek? Just give him a know. hit check real quick into a tree and run. And... <laughs> it doesn't yeah. really matter. It doesn't. Well. Yeah, I just push Ethan in front of me, and between me and the zombies. Well, when she goes to roll a pistol, just have her roll. What is it? Plus two more dice because shotgun's plus three. I think pistol is plus one. But, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So just give yourself a plus one, I guess. Then yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, bonus dice. Okay. Does two damage. Just one bonus dice? Uh, one to... extra bonus dice. Yeah, yeah. okay. Damn, that was... No, still nothing. Uh-oh. Roll on the zombie attack, walker attack table. Oh, I guess I could push. You could push. There we go! Oh, no! But I messed up! Oh my gosh! Welcome Someone to the spiral. Else. Someone else. Another, one, another one's behind you. A computer nerd with rotten bandages. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Welcome to the spiral. Choo, Tim. Telling you, Trip Ethan by accident. Oh my god. I've got zero mobility. Uh oh. You're part of the zero mobility gang as well? <laughs> I got plenty of mobility, but I also have four stress. Danny, what do you do against this computer nerd? He's one of your former employees. Oh, I hated that guy. <laughs> I'm gonna. I guess I, I shoot him. <laughs> I mean, there's not much I can do. Other than that, I'm. Uh, no, my mobility is better than my ranged combat. Can I just try to avoid? Yeah, just try to run away. Yep. Okay. Well. Once I add the other damage, it's actually a little better, but... Uh, hey! There you go. Nice. Nerds are slow. How do you, how do you finally get away? 
Uh, yeah, she's kind of uh, shooting wildly. You know, she she shot one, but it just kind of attracted the attention of another. And as he lunges at her, she um, it she kind of moves fast enough that it ends up lunging at the other zombie. And for a minute, they're kind of scrapping with each other. Nice. All right. You need five successes total. We have zero so far. Ben, right, well, let me get the, let me get this next? over with. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, she got she so. got the success, didn't she? She just messed mm -hmm. up. So we got one, right? Oh well, I yeah, think we yeah. need a, a, Oh yeah, when she pushed, you did get you said did succeed. Didn't I got you? three. Yeah. She got three successes. So uh, on the first push? No, it would just been the first. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, she got first, three. First push, she went. She failed. No, 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 no. She got one success. But oh, she you're right. I, she, see, you have yeah. one. I see that. Yep. Mobility. Oh, the, one. The, where, where we start. More. Okay. Yeah. You need four more. Uh, can I use a drive? Yeah. yeah. Beat cancer. Beat Get it, Ted. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's to find love again. And uh, he's just trying to help Brandy along. He, that's his newest crush. So, yeah, let's I'll put her, do I'll some put her, I'll put her over there by you. And if you mess uh, up, just push her into the group of zombies. Yeah, she doesn't love me. Um, <laughs> oh, Connor's going to grab her. Save her. <laughs> so, uh, that so that's two, two bonus dice for that, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's the bartender. That's the ah! bad yeah. You almost get away, but one of them grabs you. I'm going to try mobility again to get away. Five roll. <laughs> I thought you said you had four stress. You're over here lying with three stress. Uh, I can't push anymore. Well, you can't push that one. Because you succeeded. Right. Do I still get the bonus die on this or no? For the drive. Yeah, I would say for that like little encounter, you get to use it. Okay. Nice. Yeah, but oh, uh, still messed up. We get another one. Here comes another one at you. I was gonna say comes another one at you. Happen later. Welcome to the spiral. A doomsday preacher with a hole in his gut with an intestines hanging out. Yeah, great. Okay. So do I still get the two bonus or no? Yeah. Okay, so until this is resolved. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so one comes, grabs him, he spins away. For, he's got, uh, he remembers his flag football league that he used to play in. <laughs> and uh, he spins away, and then another one's there in front of him, and he spins the other way. And then there's another one, and he ducks and rolls, and uh, oh, rolls man. past them all. And he's like trucking. <laughs> he's pressing X real fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a perfect thing. Like in all those shows, things go to shit, and everybody just ends up running. You know, in every single zombie show. Okay, you have what two so far? All right. Well, that was three for me. Negative. That's not three. Uh, <laughs> you got one. Oh, oh yeah. I got one. I see all what right. you're saying. Yeah, ben, yeah, yeah. Ben will go next. Oh my god, we're gonna push it. There you go. Yeah. With a bonus one. So you got um, one, so you got four total? Yes. Uh, who needs to go still? Uh, the most unlucky man in the world and the junkie. Pretty much. Who, who has no mobility? Both of us. I have, I have zero mobility. He has zero. Um, is it based? It's off agility, though, right? Yeah. Uh, I got. You just roll the mobility still. Who has I got more four. stress? Who has more stress? Connor, um, right? Oh, Connor, yeah. I'm guessing. All right, I'll give my bonus dice to um, Bill. All right. Connor's already in a spiral. I am death spiral. <laughs> it's okay. Every zombie attack is like a. They pulled my hair out a little. Here we go. Oh, Two success, messed up. 
All right, let's see which one comes after you. Homeless person. <laughs> Another homeless junkie. Un crowd. Unhoused. Why are unhoused. these homeless people <laughs> hanging out at my resort? Uh, because of Bill Baker. He's, uh, yeah, they're all Bill Baker's friends. <laughs> <laughs> they're not really him. homeless, they're mooches. <laughs> they they're they're, they're living rent like, free in my cabins. They all just decided they're going to OD. I mean... You want to go out OD or eaten by zombies? It's because the old person's home up north of here. They all always fidget in through their garbage. So they're old and expired prescription meds. Fuck, Ned, they got you too? All right. Um, he's going to uh, close combat this guy. Shovel time. There nice. you go. Yeah. And you got Fuck. one bonus dice to give to Connor. Fuck you, Ned. Cuts his head off. <laughs> Weapon impact. <laughs> Sounded like someone <laughs> threw a dodgeball at him. <laughs> yeah, it's like that dodgeball where he throws the one behind it's his back. That, that sounded nice. kind of like a shovel. Oh, yeah. There you go, that's a shovel. <laughs> yeah. And then... All uh, right. <laughs> Connor. Bonus dice for Connor. You already want to see dice. this. It's gonna be a shit show. You can do it, I believe. You're gonna survive it, though. We always come through at the end. Hey. Look at that! <laughs> yeah! Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> That's it! That <laughs> is! One, two, Believable. three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Are you guys make it towards the hotel? Somebody roll me a 1d12 to see which NPC gets it. Or th uh, Good, Connor. Yeah, it's not going to be Brandy Land. She's up with Jake. <laughs> she saw me doing my gymnastics. Your spin move. One, two, three. Oh, the pregnant lady and her husband. You ever seen a pregnant lady out. try to run? Hey, that's, that's fitting. That's the ones I read for, right? Yeah. Uh, I think... Yeah, I think so. In the beginning, maybe. What, do you want to... Do you want to narrate their grisly death? With this creepy music playing? Do it. Yeah. Make it grisly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what has to happen. You know what has to happen. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know if I could go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Everybody's running. Everybody's trying to just save themselves. And um, Vivian and James, you know, are no different. They're, but they're running, holding each other's hands. Uh, when all of a sudden, uh, one grabs her, comes out of nowhere, out of the bushes, uh, grabs her and... Uh, rips a claw across her and uh, she falls to the ground. James ends up pushing that one back away from her and uh, but it, they slowed down and it was it was too much. Uh, they start to get overrun. One drops down and starts to bite into her stomach and uh, James loses his mind, just starts to wail on it. Uh, but they they get overrun, two, three, four of them. They get caught in the spiral, and uh, nobody can save them at that point. We just see them get crowded and, and hear them screaming as we're running off. Danny tries to keep any of the young ones from turning around, just keeps ushering them. Come on, keep moving, keep moving. Don't worry about that. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a game. Yeah, as as they're running, yeah, he he sees, you know, the woman unsuccessfully stutter step and then get pulled down, and it just makes it sick to his stomach and feel like bile rising up in his throat. But his focus now is who's surviving, and he's got. Kate and her cat in one hand and um, Liz in the other side. Just keep running. We're all, we've almost made it. Keep going. 
Don't worry about it. We'll be okay. Danny glances over at Paul with just disbelief at how fast this guy is running. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody roll me a, a 1d30. Um, 1d30? Uh, oh no, 1d15 actually, a d15. Just all right, that's how many that's how many unnamed NPCs get it too. Ooh. He wants to narrate that. So eight of those get eaten. The person is smart. People are dumb, easily panicked, much like a herd of you know, prey. And that is exactly what happens with this. What starts is an semi orderly retreat from the bar towards the hotel certainly soon turns into panic as they see um, the pregnant woman go down and get swarmed. One person just becomes totally catatonic, catatonic unable to cope with the horrors that he sees and a zombie comes up from behind him grabbing his hair, yanking his head back and then biting into the back of his uh, neck. He's a, you hear a scream as he just gets torn down and it turns around taking out a chunk of his jugular and he reaches up to his throat and dies in the pool of his own blood another an older woman never one for uh athletics a little rotund he she's trying her best to run she makes it almost to the pool before one kind of like knocks her down she rolls into the water never a good swimmer the thing follows it into her, just clinging onto her, grabbing her, and she just flails uselessly as she is bitten into and devoured. In more just trip, panic, fall, try to help one another, doing the right thing only for it to bite them literally in the face. And the last one to die is in vain trying to get to the pregnant woman, pulling them off only to have two of them grab each arm yanking on it relentlessly. A few more zombies come in, yanking on the arms, biting. You just see like both arms get yanked off in a spray of blood. And he just passes out as the rest devour their flesh. So you guys are running like uh, the clubhouse that was down here. You ran, ran past the pool up through here and up like the bigger hotels up here, right? Mm-hmm. So as you do that, the screaming and the yelling draws the attention of the war pigs as they kind of get back on board the boat and just idle speed all the way up the coastline here. They can see you guys. They look to their left and they can see the images of dashing figures through the through the cottages, like in between these little gaps of the cottages. And like you hear, you can hear Peckerwood like taking wages on who's going to get it next. Hey, I bet that pregnant bitch is going to fucking get it. <laughs> I wonder if, uh, wonder if fucking fetus will become a zombie. Shut the fuck up, Peckerwood. And uh, that they just watch you guys as you guys run and eventually make it to relative safely towards the hotel. I will let uh, you guys give us uh, some ending role play and then we'll end the session for the night I think um, Bill uh, gets up to the uh, gets up to the steps of the hotel uh, his eyes all wide open he's totally wired and covered in blood and uh, uh, he looks back at the others uh, waving for him, you know, come on, come on, letting a couple of them pass. Uh, surprised he's even waiting to help some of these people. Uh, and then he looks out past beyond him towards that boat to where those, uh, those assholes are, knowing that he's going to have to deal with them soon, too. And, uh, but he's just like one day, one damn problem at a time. Danny can't help, but after they've put some distance between them and the walkers, glances over her shoulder, sees them kind of in a huddle around the fallen, 
making these horrible noises of crunching and uh, soon the screams fade into nothing but still those horrible eating noises seem to seem to travel through the air for an unfortunately long time she pushes people to move faster move faster and tries to help people who aren't keeping up but she glances back and over at you know the group of them the few that have managed to keep most of us alive up until this point and she just shakes her head you know just says a little prayer aside of gratitude that she wasn't left to do it all alone. Yeah, Jake, as he gets there and peeks into the lobby of the hotel and over his shoulder rubs his forehead, he's uh, filled with adrenaline, but he feels nauseous from not drinking for a while and uh, <laughs> shakes... What's that? I forgot you're a drunk. Yeah, and uh, he kind of has the shakes and like clenches his fist a few times and, uh, uh, and he turns and just kind of what he's seen and just vomits uh, to the side on the ground. Um, mostly it's bile, so it just like hurts and he starts retching and drops to a knee and finally wipes his uh, <coughs> stubble off with the back of his hand and uh, just kind of like rest there for a moment um, just kind of looking around and over <laughs> his shoulder exactly Connor probably making up the last and trying to dodge the last of the zombies but once he gets to the hotel he, uh, he lets out a sigh as he um, starts undoing his body armor uh, and feels where he uh, um, the impact hit him from the shot just to make sure he wasn't shot um, and, he, and he, he kind of panically uh, feels around, doesn't feel any holes in him um, and then he just stops and looks down at all the rotten blood and flesh on him because he hasn't changed his clothes or no shower since the, the start um, and then leans against the wall and, uh, does, doesn't pay attention to the, the horde eating more once the people were with them because um, it doesn't do him any good to dwell on that uh, he feels bad he couldn't save any, any you know more of them or anything but um, he just starts kind of taking a little deep breath and to catch his breath after uh, fighting for his life more than once there Ted did you say you peeked out by the door yeah. Okay. Uh, so Ben, he goes in. You know, he is gassed. He's sweating. He had his hay bag on his back. He's got the two girls, hand in, uh, holding the hands. He gets in there. He lets go. He brings up his rifle. Kind of sweeps the, you know, room clear. Looks behind the, maybe, uh, desk, uh, the reception desk. Tells the girls to sit there, stay there. Puts his hay bag down. Goes back to the doors holding them uh, open while people come in, you know, and he's just kind of helping them, come on, come on, and you can tell he's got, like, tears welled in his eyes, and the imagery of the pregnant woman is just, there's a lot of memories that's triggered and none of them good. And he sees um, him puke, and he had been holding his own down, but finally he he pukes as well, just hearing that noise, it, it gets to him, it just... Uh, four long days of a never-ending horror, and he finds himself <coughs> ralphing, too. And he just looks at him and goes, oh, You too? This is fucking insane, man. I don't know what we're doing here. Um, but he wipes it off at the back of his, you know, like, sleeve or something. And, uh, closes the door behind him and starts looking for things to bar the door. Um, and just worry about their next uh, the next fucking step and as you bar the door there's clearly not as many in here but out of the shadows three figures just lumber as it dawns on you 
that any place you enter from now on is going to have the undead in it. First one is a dead kindergarten teacher who is missing half of her skull. Next kind of pops up from the floor, like from behind the bar, looks to be somebody with a waiter outfit on. And then finally, from the shadows, lurches a homeless person. Of course. And we will end it there. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Whew. I'll survive somehow. Somehow. We're stressed, though. <laughs>